Okay. Um, so tonight we're going to talk more about destruction. Uh, last week I just had started working on it. And um, as you saw in the beginning, uh, tonight I actually had something going. Um, it's You can see this is the last frame because what happened is when I uh, render it, it, it puts it on the screen as it does it. So this was a little tricky. I wanted a double explosion. And I'm still not 100% sure I'm doing it right. But what I ended up doing, first of all, one of the things I had to do to get it to work was to put the dot net in with the geo. Now, I think there's another way of doing it, but this is what worked. And... Um, I wanted two dot nets for two different explosions. So this is the first, and this is the second. Now, the funny thing is, in order to get, when I bring this back to one, in order to get rid of the second explosion, I have to like disable and enable it. So what I did, um, and I did this, there's this, uh, I did two things, um, one of which I don't think did anything, but the, the where you can, is it here? Enable, no, that's enable aging. There was some, oh, in a dot net, you can, I think it's the dot net, you can tell it what frame to start with. That didn't, I thought that would work and it didn't. Um... So what I ended up doing after a little research is I used this enable solver mode and I started at zero and then I have, um, I change it to one around the, the frame 121. It seemed to work again. The only thing I'm noticing is it doesn't clear when I finish the simulation. So when I go back to one, and I go up here, well, let, we got our RBD path. This is the same thing we talked about last week. Um, ground plane, RBD, RBD path. Uh, this is a merge, uh, rigid body solver or glue constraint. And again, this is like my first thing. So this, what I did is I took the output of this and made that the input to the second dot net and then merge them together. I'm not 100% sure this is right, but as you saw, it seemed to work. Um, and I got my double explosion. Let me see if we can run this real quick. I don't know. I have not also cached anything yet, so this may not run right too quickly. Let's see what's going on here. So you can see it blows up. And we get one explosion here and whole mess. Um, and it's going, actually, it's not going to doing too badly, to be honest. Um, so it goes and it goes through. And it's heading to in the 60s. I have 240 frames here. And it took maybe two and a half hours, three hours to render, which this is a relative, this is a pretty quick machine, so that helped. Um, now you can see the state it's in. Now it should get to around 121 is when I had it blow up again and there is one other thing I, I want to show you in the geo when we're done when this finishes and I also put a little uh, shading in which you'll see you saw at the beginning uh, I don't think the, the explosion is exactly the right color yet but it shows you that I can render the color what I actually want to do is render this out and bring it into cinema. Now, in order to do that, I need probably need two different 
things to bring in. One is the actual Alembic with the destruction, and the other is the uh, explosions. Because the explosions, as we saw a few weeks ago, uh, when you do um, a, a VBD, and I believe we can render the rest of it, the explosion and the destruction, as an Alembic. So I have to play around with that. That's the next step. Because again, what I want to do is is kind of put everything together in cinema. Um, we already have the uh, precious metal pieces and the uh, pot in there. So the idea would be then incorporate this. You can see there's more destruction here after our second explosion or virtual explosion on uh, stuff lying around um and this can be improved i'd like to see more destruction in the front but you can see it's got a fair amount of destruction in there um and uh that's why i look kind of cool you can see smoke clears and uh actually this isn't doing too badly but again I, this is a relatively fast machine and you'll see it still have a problem a little bit that it doesn't go back and clean up everything, clean up the second um, uh, dot net. So what I was doing is doing it manually. Oh, maybe we get even more destruction. I don't know. <laughs> well, let me turn and stop this and show you what I want to show you. All right. Um, so, let's come here. I'm going to bring this down. This is, again, something I learned from the tutorials. What I did is... Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what I did here. So I am setting, I'm fitting this into a range, and that's FP scale for each. And I believe I did something, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if I really did. Um, I think this was to play the points. I think we're doing maybe using the random i'm trying to remember what i did i have to look at it again so you have for this is a for each loop and this is the metadata uh this is the copy to point i feel like i'm missing something so let's see what we got here i'm gonna Actually, what I'm going to do is bring up the geometry spreadsheet and because this is for each point, this is copy to points for each point, copy to points, and what is oh no this is this is the um yeah yeah this is this is trying to make something to uh to destruction here this point wrangle here produces f so this creates this the piece this modifies the piece scale and So, oh. yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what I did here. I'm going to have to get back. I'm going to have to talk about that again next week because right now I'm not remembering exactly what I did here. So I will, I will talk about this next week or uh, put a little post or something. But the, the whole idea is we're trying to get a more 
interesting uh, fracture. So that is the the uh, the the reason you're you're changing the points. Uh, you you're changing the scale here. I guess that's the scale. This is the scale of the pieces. Um, of the pot. That's what I think this is. Because this is a float. And this determines the scale of the different pieces. And, um, so we're going to have, you know, kind of try to make the pieces more of a random size. So, anyway, um, you know, then we get our, our whole, uh, destruction and what have you. But let me talk about the issue that I did have with uh, rendering the destruction. Uh, initially, it would it came, came out where the building, nothing happened when you rendered it. You saw it in, in the, in the, in the uh, scene view here. Well, but you did not see it in the render. So what I did is I tried various things. Um, I believe part of it may have been caused by, like I said at the beginning, the fact that I was importing the geo incorrectly. So when I put the dot net here, that helped. Um, what I ended up doing is using a little trick. I found another... Um, uh, scene where it worked and then I basically plugged in the geometry I wanted to use and the constraints and all that and kept adopting it as is and uh, that seemed to uh, seem to help now of course, I don't need it in this one because I'm not trying to enable it. This is this is a enable solver that I did use in the second one. Um, but that was the whole thing. That's how I got it to finally render. I don't know why something would render, um, you know, in one case but not render in the other. Uh, what is different things um yeah because I wasn't moving it so anyway basically what I did is I took what worked I made sure I was plugging it directly into the dot net and it did get working um one thing that was suggested is to look at um, where is it now? In the, is it in the GL or the dot net? I think it may be in the actual GL here. This is GL3. Uh, under redshift object. Um, it was suggested for me to, oh no, 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 no. It is under instancing to, to look at these. I found when only this was checked, it seemed to work. When I started checking, checking process instance and override instance, file, you know, this stuff, that's, it didn't, was not happy. So I think that was one of the other things because I'd been playing with that and it seemed to not work. But when I used one that where I left it at the default, it seemed to work. So anyway, um, hopefully this has been interesting. Let's uh, just to go over the final point. Number one, I used the enable here in the second dot net 
in order to get it to work right and and used a um, keyframe when I want to come on. The second thing to be aware of is, again, I plug the dot nets directly into the geosim. The other thing I did is I took the output of this dot net and I plugged that into the second dot net. So it wouldn't be start, because otherwise it would start, if I, if I did it from building out, it would be starting from complete building. So that was not going to work. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave comments. Um, one thing uh, I just want to point out, I'm having some issues with my uh, email that I use for this stuff. So if you are on my mailing list, you're still getting the emails. I just, if you try to send email, respond to them, um, trying to work that out. Uh, it had to do with my move. Very odd. I moved from, I moved where my stuff was and the emails were working fine for like, I think I did it like three weeks ago. And it was fine until like mon like Sunday. And the reason I found out is uh, someone had sent me an email to that email address where I had sent him one from that address and uh, I never got it. So there is uh, something odd going on there. But anyway, again, hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for watching and I will speak to you next time. Take care.